quick update on me. I'm actually working on a pretty big video. We took a trip up to Santa Clarita with the collage guys, filmed for the whole day, and everything that we're not using for the video, I'm using right now to make just kind of like a vlog of the day. But while we were up there, I actually caught COVID. So I'm stuck inside right now. And editing that video has become pretty tedious because I literally had to go through hundreds of video files, tag them, get them off of my phone and all that. So in the meantime, I wanted to get another video out for you guys. And this one's perfect because it actually accompanies the last two videos I made about flipping out of slides very well. And so this is going to be about how to sit on those slides for a lot longer. Some of it can apply to grinds as well, but this is mostly for slides, no slides, tail slides. So the first thing I want to talk about is your posture. And I always tell people to think of it like sitting on a bicycle, right? Because you want your knees to be bent. You want to be pretty low. That is, after you pop, turn, and land on the ledge in your tail slide or your nose slide, you want to bend your knees to a comfortable position where you can sit there, kind of like a squat, like you're sitting on a bicycle. And you're gonna have to experiment with whether you like to be, like let's say this is the board. If you like your head to be a little bit behind, a little bit in front, or if you like your head to be right over the board. I actually use different postures for different tricks. For front side tail slides, for instance, I always like to be just a little bit behind the board. For backside tail slides, I like to be, have my head kind of pointed in the direction that I came from because it helps me push on that leg so that I can push into that slide a little bit more. I've always had more trouble sliding backside tail slides than anything for some reason. And then for front side noses, I like to be right over that board. So my shoulders are right on top of the board, my head's right on top of the board, and I actually like to be looking down at my front foot's heel. So the foot that's over the ledge, I like to be looking at that heel. That way it doesn't feel like I'm sliding backwards. But I keep that bicycle position. Obviously my arms aren't up like they're on handlebars, they're gonna be out to help me balance. But once we've got that posture down, we have to talk about your front foot's position or whichever foot is over the ledge's position. This is an important one because for front side tail slides and back side nose slides, I most of the time will drag my heel on the ledge. And the reason that I do that, there, there's multiple reasons. One of them being my size 12 foot means that my half of my foot's always hanging off of the board. So for me to try to keep that foot off of the ledge is more trouble than it's worth. And the other reason is that most of the time I'm either gonna pop or flip out of that slider grind. And if I use the heel drag to control my speed, I have more control and I can focus on leverage. Because a lot of times when you try to jump on and keep your heel off, you have less control. And that means you're having a harder time flipping, shoving, or popping out. Now, when it comes to backside tail slides and frontside nose slides, I have to keep my heel off of the ledge. And there's a simple reason for that. And that is, when you're sliding a frontside nose slide, your heel is hanging over in front of you. So your heel is leading, it's in front of your board. So if you were to press your heel down onto the ledge and try to drag it for control, that's gonna create friction that's gonna push you back and stop you from sliding. And the same is true for backside tail slides, whereas front side tail slides and backside nose slides are different. So yeah, for the front side nose slides, backside tail slides, I keep my heel up off the ledge. And for the backside nose slides and front side tail slides, I use the heel drag to give me some control. And I kind of think of the pressure that I apply like the brake caliber, caliper also on a bicycle. So there's a lot of uh, bicycle analogies in this. And if you, if you try to think of it that way, it'll make it easier. If you're riding a bike and you need to come to a stop, you, you're not gonna squeeze on the front brake all of a sudden because that's gonna make you tip over your front wheel and eat it, right? So you wanna think of it the same way when you're pressing your heel down on a ledge for your slides. You wanna gradually apply pressure and not so much pressure that you come to a sudden stop because you don't wanna dismount after stopping. You wanna still be sliding. 
The heel drag helps a lot when you're sliding down hubba's because if you try to jump on a hubba with a front side tail slide and not drag your heel, it's gonna go a lot faster than you were anticipating most of the time. This happened to me a couple of times and it made me fall because I got used to tail slides on rails. And when you tail slide a rail, you can't drag your heel on the rail. It just doesn't work. It feels really awkward. It feels like the rail is going to grab your heel. And that's just because there's such a difference between the surfaces, your board and the rail. So yeah, when you're going down hubbas with those nose slides and tail slides, you wanna try to use that heel pressure as well. That's about all I have. So yeah, you use that bicycle position to control, to have leverage. Uh, experiment with where your shoulders and your head are in relation to the board. And then use the heel drag or don't use the heel drag depending on which slide you're doing. Now, I said that some of this would apply to grinds and it does. So for any of my grinds that I'm trying to do for a long time, whether it's a nose, nose grind, a crooked grind, a 5-0 grind, a smith grind, I'm gonna be seated in that bicycle position as well. The only grind where I really use heel drag is for a long crooked grind. Because when you're going for a long crooked grind, especially on ledges, you gotta go very fast because there's the friction of your trucks coming into play now. And when you get onto that ledge going really fast, it feels kind of crazy. And so what you can do is you can wait until you've been on the ledge for a second and then start to apply that little bit of heel pressure just to slow you down enough that you can control when you're going to pop out. And all of this is going to require that you experiment with it so you get a feel for it and then you understand the control that's necessary. None of this is just going to solve your problems overnight. And that, that's a, a good thing for me to add here because most skate tricks are like that. This stuff is not going to happen overnight, right? Because there's so many different factors at play. Every time you pop your board on the ground, your tail gets worn away. Depending on the surface that you're popping on, it's going to wear unevenly. So your pop is going to feel different. Your trucks, your, the nose of your board, they're going to wear out differently. So when you get onto that ledge, it's going to feel very different each time. It's not like you're playing basketball and you're on a court and it just feels great because it's polished up and the ball hits the surface and it's consistent. So skateboarding requires an immense amount of feel and it's going to take a lot of trial and error for you to get used to it. But all of these tips, if you use them properly and you practice them deliberately, they should help you the way that they've helped me over the years. Let me know if they've done so. Also, let me know what you'd like me to cover next. I'm going to go because uh, this is about as much as I can talk without losing my voice. So hope this helps and enjoy skateboarding.